Hey there, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Hey, you guys know that poker is a tough, tough game, right? And when you find value in something, you need to exploit that value. Well, Windstar Casino, during their River Series, has one of the greatest value tournaments ever in the history of poker. It's called their Mega Satellite to the Main Event. Now, this is a Survivor Tournament. It's $330, and the top 20% plus 10 players get $1,500 in Lammers toward the main event or any other tournament that they have during the River Series. Of course, at Windstar, it's such a busy and packed casino that you can sell those Lammers at 100% very, very easily. And because Windstar is not one of the circuit stops for the pros, then the fields, at least relatively early on, are not nearly as tough as like if you play at Choctaw or in Las Vegas or whatever. So until it's almost time for the main event, there's not a whole lot of pros that get there. So you have local pros and Oklahoma pros, but you don't have pros from all over the country, making these tournaments pretty easy to survive and get the $1,500. I have been extremely successful, like the 70 to 75% win rate on these over the past seven years. So it's always my favorite time of the year. So the first one of these tournaments was this past Sunday and I played in it and here are the hands and the results. Hey, I'm here at Windstar for the first Windstar Mega uh, Satellite for the Windstar River event. Uh, $330, they pay 20% plus 10 people uh, Lammers to get into the main event. And so here we go. So to me, this is absolutely the best value in poker. Uh, these are probably the I think the easiest tournaments that I've ever played in, so hopefully we'll do well today. So I wasn't getting any hands early on, uh, so I didn't play. Uh, Survivor is way different than trying to win the tournament, and I really, really looked like a tight player. <laughs> so I finally did uh, steal some pots. I had some hands where I would bet preflop with like an ace jack or an ace queen uh, with, but continuation bet, and again, because I looked so tight, they were all folding. And all of a sudden, in the middle of level two, we started with 7,000 chips, and I've got 16,000. That's a pretty good start. Unfortunately, I then ran queens into kings uh, for a guys all in, and ended up going down to 78.50 at blinds at 100, 200 when this hand happened. I'm in the plus one with ace of clubs, jack of diamonds. I have 78.50. Uh, the under the gun makes it 200. I raise it up to 700, the button and the under the gun call. So with 2400 in the pot, the flop comes ace of hearts, queen of spades, eight of spades, under the gun checks. I make it 900, the button calls, then the under the gun shoves all in for 12,000. Youch. So he either has a two pair, a flush draw, um, it's a rebuy tournament, I can rebuy if I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and make the call the guy behind me folds. So unfortunately, he does have queen eight for two pair, but bingo bongo, the turn is a jack, and I have a bigger two pair. River's a two, and I win that hand. I don't have to rebuy, and now I have a lot of chips again. Hey, even at survivor tournaments, even on ones that are relatively easy, sometimes you need to get a little bit fortunate, and I did this time. So on these uh, survivor tournaments, I usually play very, very straightforward, tight, and in this hand, I did something very, very uncharacteristic. With blinds at 100, 200, 200, I had three four of hearts on the button with 15,500. The small blind and the big blind were players I thought I could push around pretty easily, so I went ahead and raised it up to 500. The small blind makes the call. So the flop with 1400 in the pot comes ace of hearts, eight of diamonds, five of clubs. He checks, I make it 900. Ugh, he makes the call. I do have a gutter ball though. The turn with 3200 in the pot is the four of hearts giving me a pair. Uh, he checks, I decide I got a little bit of value now, I'm gonna check back. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> the river with 3200 in the pot is a 10 of clubs, he checks, I bet 3,200, and he goes in the tank. 
Unfortunately for me, he calls because he was on a flush draw and hit the 10 on the end and then didn't believe me. But the problem was the check on the turn. If I continue to fire, he absolutely folds the river. We talked about it later. Mm. But this is just dumb. In a survivor tournament, there's no reason to do that. The survivor preserving chips is the most important thing. Uh, it was just a bad, bad play by me. Not the only one I had in this tournament. You're gonna find that out in a few minutes. Okay, blinds at 100, 200, 200 still. I'm in the hijack with 10,000 chips. I have king of spades, queen of diamonds. The plus one, who's a young, pretty darn good player, uh, makes it 600, I make the call. The flop, with 1,700 in the pot comes, queen, eight, five, rainbow. He bets 1,000. I have top pair, pretty good kicker. I make the call. The turn, 3,700 in the pot is the two of clubs. He leads out again for 2,000, makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm still top pair, good kicker. I don't think I can quit here. He has lots of bluffs in here, so I make the call. The river is an offsuit ace, and he jams and has me covered. Jeez, what do you do here? Tell me what you guys would do here. There's, I have 6,400 chips left. Uh, that's still buy-in period. 7,000 is the buy-in. Uh, what would you do here? I ain't scared of no ghost. I make the call. He has ace jack, and I win a really nice one and go back to a good, healthy stack. So from there, things were pretty quiet. Uh, my target for this um, tournament was to get to 28K, and I was at 24K after that, so I didn't have to do anything too exciting. I won a few uh, pots with raises preflop or continuation bets and so I got to my 28,000 with about half the field left which is very very good because at that time average is only gonna be 14,000 I had I think 28 29,000 so very very good so I just tread water that's all I did try to do is stay at about that level and that's what I did until very very late in the tournament so they're paying 65 players out of 247 and we get down to about 78 players. My stack has dwindled. I have about 21,000 when I made another mistake. Because 21,000 chips was plenty. There's only 11 players that had to go out and uh, blinds were at 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. I had plenty of chips just to sit there, wait for big, big hands if I want to play any, uh, but I didn't do that. <laughs> So there's a Windstar regular, his name is Larry. He plays, a, he wears a Corvette jacket, he's an older guy, a uh, good player, very, very aggressive. And Larry has a big stack and he's raising every single hand. And I kind of got sick of it and it made me do something stupid. So I have Ace of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds on the button, uh, 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. Somebody limps in, Larry makes it, 6,000 in the cutoff, he's directly to my right. I decide for some unknown reason, instead of either folding or raising, to make the call. The other guy folds, but still there's a pretty big pot of about 17,000 before the flop. And the flop comes out, Jack 8-4, giving me top, top. Larry leads out for 6,000. Now what do I do? Again, I don't like my play. I see there should be either be a fold or a shove here. I make the call. Bad, 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 bad. The turn is a no nothing five, makes six, seven good, I believe. Uh, Larry bets 10,000. And now what do I do? Because I played it so horribly, and I have about 11,000 chips left, which is still enough to survive. I tell Larry, I, I said, I absolutely know that I'm ahead of you here. And he says, he says under his breath, just make the fold, just make the fold. I know that I'm good here. Uh, but I decide to go ahead and make the fold, leaving me 11,000 chips left. Really bad, really bad people. That's not how to play a survivor very well. But the very, very next hand, I'm in the big blind and I get pocket tens same exact thing, comes around to Larry. He makes a raise to 4,000. I shove all in for about 11,000, if I remember correctly. 
comes back around to Larry. He snap calls with whoo, a pocket nines. I survive that and I go right back up to about 25,000 and from there I could cruise. So there was only one more interesting hand. The tables were situated so you, such so you could you stand up and see almost everybody's chips. And there were chip stacks that were 1,200, <laughs> 1,500, 2,000. There had to be a, there was a bunch of them. And it was at one, two, two. So it was interesting at our table, for example, one guy had 4,000 chips. Uh, it checked around to him, I believe, in like the hijack. He shoves all in, and blinds are 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, and everybody folds. What is going on? I think it's because that he was a, he's a good guy. Everybody likes him. I think they just folded because of that. Because if it's me and my buddies and we're behind him, every single person is calling there trying to get the knockout. This is on the Stone Cold bubble. We're on the bubble. One more player gets knocked out and everybody gets the chips. And they fold. I'm, I, was, I was absolutely shocked. On the table next to us, my buddy Rick Merritt has 1,200 chips. He is in the big blind, so he's got to put them all in there. And the under the gun, who happened to be a big stack with shoving on every hand, shoves. Now, how dumb is that? <laughs> if he limps, everybody else checks, and now Rick would have to beat nine players. But because everybody else folded, Rick ended up having uh, seven jack. The other guy had seven deuce and Rick survived. Now, I'm happy for my friend Rick. However, that is not how you should play a Survivor Tournament. That is bad poker. So, given that setup, I was not going to do that. If I had a decent hand, or any kind of hand where the guy was so short, I was gonna go ahead and make the call. So it happened to be that's exactly what happened. Our button only had 3,700 chips. It folded around to him and he shoved. The small blind folded, and now it's me. I only have like 10,700 chips, but there's so many shorties that even if I lose this hand and I go to 7,000, I think I'm gonna be okay. So I called with three seven of spades. <laughs> now, I did get credit from some members of the table that said, oh, I love it, you're, you're playing poker the way it's supposed to be played on a survivor, and the guy had pocket tens. I didn't even come close, I whiffed everything, <laughs> so I lost my 3,700 chips, but you're trying if we're on the stone cold bubble that's how you're supposed to play so i did the right thing even though i lost my chips and of course i still survived i think we had only two more hands and somebody got knocked out and we got the chips the lammers 330 dollars in 1500 dollars out yay for mr bill actually i was a little bit disappointed in this year because in years previous the main event was 2500 dollars and it was $550 for the Mega Satellite, which means you could get a profit of $1,950. Well, they lowered the main event this year to $1,500, so the Mega Satellites are $330, which means you could only make $1,170 for one of these. I did make that, I'm happy about that. All right, so just a couple of hands from my Wednesday Poker League that were interesting. In the tournament, uh, at the 100-200 level, which is only the third level of the tournament, uh, I have pocket aces. Uh, in the big blind, I have 11,400 uh, starting chips, or 10,000. Uh, the plus one, whose name is Pat, he's a very, very, very loose, aggressive player. Uh, he is 9,600. Um, he makes it 600. There's a hijack player that calls, uh, comes to me. I make it 1,800. Pat then raises it up to 4,000. Uh, the other player folds, and since I'm only playing against one player here, and odds are I am going to win this pot, I smooth call, hoping I can get all the chips. I also check in the dark, and the flop comes. Seven of clubs, five of diamonds, jack of clubs. He shoves all in. I absolutely snap call. He had 5,600 left, and the board runs out. Three of hearts, queen of clubs. <sighs> Another four to five percenter gets Mr. Bill, and I'm down to, what, 1,800 chips. And then this one hand in the cash game. It happened to be a PLO eight hand. Uh, I'm in the big blind with ace of diamonds, king of clubs, Five of diamonds, two of clubs, pretty darn good hand for a PLO eight. Somebody made it five and there's a couple callers. I made it 30, I ended up getting five callers. 
the flop with 158 in the pot comes pretty darn good. Ace of spades, queen of diamonds, three of diamonds. I've got draws to the nuts everywhere. So I make it pot 158. My buddy Steve then starts talking. He says, I know what you have. You've got one of two hands why you would raise pre-flop. And he says, you probably know what I have that I'm thinking. And I know, I absolutely know that Steve has a set of queens here uh, from the way he's talking. He ends up shoving for 211. The guy behind him goes all in for 176. The next guy goes all in for 168. And of course, I snap call with all of my draws. The turn card is probably the best card in the deck for me. It's the four of diamonds giving me nut high, nut low at the time. Woohoo! Unfortunately for me, the river card matches the board and it matches the ace. Um, now there's only one other ace out there, but I know somebody's got it. I know they've got a boat. And it happens to be the one of the players had ace three and we ended up chopping the $924 pot instead of Mr. Bill scooping the whole thing. But that is how it goes sometimes, and sometimes you're not gonna run as well as others. Uh, I still ended up winning uh, for the night, so happy with that, even though I didn't run very good. <laughs> hey, there's my son, Billy. Billy won the tournament last night. Tell him, Billy. I did. Hold on, say that again. I did. <laughs> Tell him how dominating you were with four players left. It was, I had 90% of the chips with four left. <laughs> How much did you win last night? About 700. Yeah. Great job, son. Okay guys, I'm pretty excited. My meetup game is on this Saturday, either one day or two days from when you're watching this, depending on when I put this out. Saturday, August 17th, we've already got two tables and I'm working on a third, I think we'll absolutely get three tables, which I'm excited about. So, my first ever meetup game, there are some stresses and some pressures, but I think for the most part, it'll be really fun. If you're seeing this before Saturday, there's still time to sign up. Come on out and see us. And the Windstar Mega Satellite number two is the next day on Sunday, and you guarantee I'm gonna be up there for the best value tournament in poker to see if I can't get another $1,170 profit. So, as always, thank you guys for watching and subscribing and sharing and giving comments and being positive. I love that about the poker peeps. So, you guys have a fantastic and blessed week. Hopefully, I'll see some of you at the meetup game. If not, I will see you all again next week. Bye.